Today on El Cara Ham Radio, we're going to take a look at the newest generation of the BL-1 wireless Bluetooth programmer from TID Radio. Okay, folks, before we jump into this review, we just wanted to give out some exciting news. Uh, TID Radio was kind enough to send us two of the BL-1 programming units. Unfortunately, one of them was dead on arrival, but we're still going to give away the other unit. The other unit seems perfectly fine, and uh, the only use it's had was just for the purpose of this review. So down in the comments below, use the special word TID Radio, all one word, all lowercase, and you could win one of these cool little programming gadgets. So make sure you comment below, TID Radio, and we'll pick a winner in about a week, and we'll let you folks know who that is. So let's jump right into the review coming up next. All right, just a quick unboxing. You've got the main programming uh, manual there. has nice visual pictures of everything that you'll need to do, which we'll also demonstrate in a moment. It's got the thank you letter and also the programming cable and the main unit itself in a nice foam package there. So it's nicely packaged, shouldn't really get damaged. It would take a pretty good crush or something to, uh, to probably damage this unit. So yeah, nice decent packaging from TID Radio, the BL-1, really BL-1 V2. Now I also wanted to show this other card that was in the programming manual, uh, and that's for their basically customer service and how to get the software, the uh, walkie-talkie-software.com right there. So I just wanted to be sure and show that off. It's a very nice card, uh, very nicely printed. The card stock kind of a, almost almost like a credit card kind of a thing, sort of a plastic. So nice to see that. Now with this unit, one of the things they did for V2 is they flipped the pin. So it's going to point up on the radio. Uh, some customers had, uh, had talked about that with version 1. And so you can see here it sort of points upwards and it leaves the bottom part of the radio open so you can hold the radio better when you're trying to work with this unit. Uh, simple, but I think a nice change uh, on their part to listen to the customer and bring that in. Now, as far as getting the software, uh, as you saw in the, the manual previously, uh, it's called OD Master, letter O, letter D, Master, uh, and iOS or Android, phone or tablet. Uh, here you can say we're, we're in the, uh, the Play Store for, uh, uh, for Google, for Android, and just go up there. Uh, this is just on the website, but we'll see you can obviously get to it from your phone or tablet itself. Type in OD Master, and you should uh, see the software come up and see the um, that, that logo it has, sort of the mountains uh, logo that it has there. And you know you're in the right spot, and that's what you're going to need to install. So we'll take a look at the actual interface and how to get the software on the phone itself in the next clip. All right, so here we're on my phone, and we're going to uh, go over and go to the Play Store and uh, do a search for OD Master, just like we can do uh, and saw that we could do on the web interface for the Play Store. And look up OD Master, and of course, obviously find the application, download and install the application. Uh, very simple, just an application like anything else, whether you're on iOS or Android, the normal uh, way that we handle uh, new applications on our devices, phones, or tablets. Once you've got the application, uh, then we can, of course, open it up, uh, as we'll see here, and uh, takes it just a moment. Uh, and then, of course, you've got a couple of uh, screens to click on and a couple of things to, uh, to kind of agree to. Uh, this software does want to have Bluetooth and location turned on uh, so that we can find the, uh, the device locally. I've noticed that with a number of Bluetooth-enabled devices, um, all kinds of things like uh, dash cams in the car, in different things where they want location services turned on at least for the duration of finding the device. Uh, you're going to need to create an account so I went ahead and created a simple sort of a test account really uh, for this. Uh, not really a big deal and once you've uh, registered that uh, then you can uh, begin using the software. So here we're seeing the, some of the login process and then they give you a, a kind of a quick sort of a questionnaire just a, a few questions just a little bit about yourself. They do have sort of a social media aspect to their software. You don't really have to uh, participate um, really in that in, to any significant degree if you don't want to. So uh, if you really want to just kind of stick to the programming part of it, which is what I did. 
Uh, again, there's my test account, literally just called it test. Um, you know, just took the default uh, birth date and stuff on that. Uh, click next and ready to try it now. And again, just a couple of, um, of pointer screens there. Now these are again, some of the sort of social uh, chat channel things. I just unchecked all of those. If you're, if you're interested in that stuff, of course, go ahead and participate. Again, here's where uh, we're gonna take a quick look. It needs Bluetooth and uh, location services turned on uh, so it can find the device. Again, I find that very common with a lot of Bluetooth devices these days. They want both turned on to, uh, to better make sure they found the right device to pair up to. Uh, again, a couple of little tip screens. You can click uh, skip on those once you're uh, once you're ready, and uh, you know confirm your choices, and you're pretty much ready to go. Uh, and so you can see you just kind of work your way from the top of this software interface towards the bottom. Uh, so the first thing is to connect to the Bluetooth. So make sure the the BL dash one's plugged into your radio. Radio's on. Bluetooth unit is on. Uh, make sure again location services are on. And uh, you'll see here in a second, when we refresh this, it should pick it up. So far, it's picked it up every time I've done any testing with it. It's picked it up right away. So uh, you'll see me refresh the screen here in just a moment. And it picks it right up. Now, my unit uh, was called KIT, K-I-T. Uh, so it found it right away. And you just connect it. Uh, and then you move to the next step in that list on this screen, which is select your model of radio. Uh, as you uh, saw earlier, we're dealing with a UV5RA, uh, and you'll see um, in, in the software interface here as we go along, uh, they keep adding more and more radios that uh, this is compatible with. Uh, a few of the models are still listed as being in beta, but for the UV5RA unit that I had, uh, it seemed to work just fine. Uh, that one's not listed in beta. So again, uh, just showing coming into the software, uh, connect the Bluetooth unit, go down and select your model, Again, mine was uh, you know, the regular Bofang UV5RA, which they specifically have a list for. Uh, you can read from the radio, write to the radio. Here you can see we read from the radio, some simple programming there, and it lists it all. So when you're um, in this software interface, you can see all of these settings. You can see all your channels that your radio has. Of course, with these uh, Bofangs, 128 channels, 0 through 127. Uh, and then you can see you can scroll down on any given channel and you can get to all the settings if you need to to put in uh, any uh, you know any offsets. Of course, if you if you have any any special settings that you would like to put in place uh, for your repeater, you know if your repeater has uh, frequencies and things that you have to utilize for transmit or receive or both, uh, it's pretty much all in there. Very similar to things like Chirp and other software you may have used. Uh, of course, the interface is a little different. But it's pretty much all in there. So I'm just kind of scrolling down, showing you that, that pretty much it's all there. And of course, we don't have to touch a lot of these settings a lot of the time. But uh, pretty much anything you might need to, uh, to work on or adjust, uh, it's in there just like we would be used to. So it seems to be a pretty nice interface. I know that they've, they've been continuing to put work into this interface over the last couple of years. Uh, I know uh, KY4BDP Brian uh, reviewed the the first generation of this product, and it was uh, pretty decent then. Uh, and they've made some, I think, nice hardware changes to it that now with USB-C and flipping those connectors around. Uh, and then also, I think the software has has made some advancements. So to be able to do this without a, a classic computer with your phone or tablet, uh, because you can create these programming sort of profiles or templates, save them out, and then you can use them and reuse them, edit them, and so you could have, you know, any number of these to match any number of radios or areas of the country that you go to. Okay, folks, one of the things I wanted to show pretty quickly here while we're going through this overview of the uh, TID Radio Bluetooth Wireless Programmer, the BL-1, is just a quick reference to where is a resource where I can find the information that I would want to program into my radio so I can access certain repeaters around the country or, or even the world. And, of course, one of the great uh, resources we've had for a long time now is repeaterbook.com. Repeaterbook.com. You can access it via the web like we see here. You can also get it on your phones and tablets, as you see there from the app stores. So uh, very convenient, very handy to use. Create a free account, and you can come in here, uh, depending on where you are. Uh, I'm in uh, North America, so I'll click on that. And you just sort of drill down here. 
here uh, if it's the United States, which it is. I'm in the state of Kentucky, so we'll click on that. And this will start to show you some of the different ways you can filter and look for information to program into that radio, uh, frequency-wise or, or you know, digital-type uh, modes, uh, specialty things like weather nets or you know, Aries, Racy, Skywarn. Uh, even say you're traveling and you're interested along you know, the major uh, you know, interstate corridors and things. But, of course, one of the other things we can do is, here in the state of Kentucky, it's going to show us all the counties that we have. Kentucky has a lot of counties, uh, and some of them are pretty large. Uh, the largest uh, city in, in sort of county is Louisville, Kentucky. And, yes, that is pronounced Louisville if you're uh, from Kentucky. People that say Louisville and other things, we know they're not from Kentucky. That's an easy way to tell. But if we go there, we'll see there's a pretty good number of repeaters listed here. Uh, not a huge number, but for uh, for the uh, the city and the, the county there, pretty good number. And this is showing you the information that you would need to put into the application or directly into your radio or however you're going to program that radio uh, so that you can contact and, and properly interact with that repeater. Does it require tones to uh, to transmit and or receive and, and things like that? And if you want even a little bit more information about a given repeater, the, uh, the frequencies here on the far left-hand side are, are, as you can probably tell, hot links. So if you click on one of those, you'll even get a little more information on that uh, particular repeater. Uh, again, all the information on what to program into it and, you know, uh, a little bit of information about who, who owns or runs the repeater. There's even a map to kind of show you approximately where the repeater is and some things like that. So I just wanted to, uh, to show this for folks, you know, so that you would have an idea where to get the information to program into your, your radio, uh, regardless of the tool that you're going to use. And, of course, we uh, are talking specifically about the TID Radio uh, BL-1 Bluetooth Wireless Programming Unit and the OD Master application that you can run on your phone or tablet uh, or interact with, uh, with the web. All right, folks, I also wanted to show you that there is a web interface to work with the OD Master application on your phone or tablet. Uh, unfortunately, the day uh, that I was trying to interact with this uh, web interface, it seemed like it was having a problem. Uh, I was able to log in with my account OK, and it was able to see that I had uh, a saved profile or, or set of settings. You can see their test. In fact, I tried a couple of different ones, uh, but I got errors every time I tried to interact with that uh, saved profile or, or set of settings. Uh, I tried three different browsers, a couple of different uh, saves of, of the settings or profile, and it, it crashed in the same way with the same errors every time. Uh, I have seen this web interface work before, so this appears to be a, a fairly newer, hopefully temporary issue, uh, getting these, uh, these server, you know, typically 500 server class errors. Uh, so hopefully they'll get that fixed relatively quickly. But uh, when I was trying to demonstrate this, I just couldn't get it to work. Uh, but normally you can interact with your save profile, create them on the web interface or edit them and send it back out to your phone. And then you can send it back out to the radio. So you've got your phone interface through the app and then you're, you're supposed to have this web interface. So hopefully they'll get this fixed pretty quickly. All right, folks, that's it for this one. This is Chris, KY4CKP for Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. We'll see you in the next video, 73.